Hi, I am Ileana Douglas, and welcome to Trailers from Hell. I am going to be talking about a film that I absolutely adore. It's called A New Leaf. It is written and directed and starring Elaine May. It is a brilliantly underrated comedy that unfortunately boasts uh, probably the worst trailer of all time to promote it. There's not even a scene from the film in the trailer, but we're going to prevail here, and I'm going to sell you on A New Leaf. A New Leaf marks the directorial debut of Elaine May, and to give it context, the film was made in 1970, and before A New Leaf came out, there had been a huge gap in American female directors. Basically, Ida Lupino was it. She was working in the 50s and then in the 60s on TV, and pretty much there was nobody else until Elaine May came along. And May was already quite famous from her uh, comedy partnership with Mike Nichols when A New Leaf was released in 1971. Unfortunately, it did bad at the uh, box office, but later it attained cult status. That means people like me liked it. The story is that it's basically a black comedy about this wealthy bachelor, Henry, played by Walter Matthau, who after he loses all of his money, he needs to look for a rich heiress to marry and then kill her. He finds one, Henrietta, who's played by May herself, and she's a, kind of a lonely, somewhat loony, uh, very wealthy botanist. And as their romance and their wedding ensues, he plans to uh, simply murder her on her honeymoon and, so that he can maintain his lifestyle. He begins to have, unfortunately, genuine human emotions towards this creature, women, that's what we do to men. And of course, this unlikely comic romance hits one of my favorite themes, which is Henry Hedda's complete delusion that Henry is in fact madly in love with her, and not just because she's the wealthy heiress who he wants to kill and take all of her money. She's sure that underneath his gruff exterior and pretty much downright callousness towards her, that deep down he really loves her for who she is, and they're gonna spend an eternity together sharing a love of ferns and Mogan David extra heavy Malaga wine with soda and lime juice, which you'll find out they drink a lot of that. Like I said, women. Elaine May is at first so straight in her goofiness that it might take getting used to. I mean, the get up alone, she's got these Jerry Lewis glasses, the voice, the fact that she can't eat a cookie without getting crumbs all over her. They're slightly over the top, but uh, you, Find yourself pretty soon won over. Mathau is completely stylish in his 70s, you know, bachelor getup. There's a lot of Pierre Cardin going on in this film. And he drives around in a sports car that he always has to fix because it, uh, it has carbon on the valves. His only real friendship, this is interesting, is played uh, by his butler, George Rose. And I think it's interesting, it's the only actually moment of tenderness in the movie is uh, between he and his butler as they uh, plot to trick poor Henrietta into uh, marrying Henry. Their dialogue and their complete disregard for Henrietta is just fantastic and very, very memorable. Now, sadly, Paramount reduced her original cut listen, this is the woman who made Ishtar, from three hours to an hour and 42 minutes. So we don't know if this is how the film would have really turned out. In an interview, May said that the studio cut two additional murders to adhere to the production code and an additional fantasy sequence. She attempted to sue Paramount to block the release of their re-edited version, which you're about to see. I still love it. Here it is, A New Leaf. What I love about May's Henrietta is that underneath the film's deep cynicism about the state of relationships between men and women, she sees something better in Henry than he can see in himself, and it's very touching. There's a honeymoon scene where he must teach Henrietta literally how to wear a negligee, and it seems to be improv, it's brilliant, it's my favorite bit in the film, but it's in this moment, it's his genuine caring for this woman that he is about to murder that reveals May's true genius. The fine line of uncomfortableness between them is what I love, and you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Her movies have a style all of their own. They're endearing and off-putting at the same time. She never comments on people's actions. She simply lets you laugh at their foibles, and it shows you that anyone at any time can be sparked by love and turn over a new leaf.
Now, I've read that Matthau and May did not get along. He called her Mrs. Hitler, which is kind of a bad sign. But maybe their off-screen tension added a dimension to this very quirky love-hate-murder romance black comedy thing. I've championed this film for years. I really think it deserves more attention because there are hints of brilliance from the writer and the director and the star. She followed this up with another amazing film called The Heartbreak Kid, which is even more cynical than this film, but I suggest it as a great double feature for either a very rocky romance or a completely dysfunctional couple who happens to like Walter Matthau. It'll be a great night. worst trailer of all time. Henrietta uh, also has to deal with her completely corrupt business manager played to the hilt. I think he only played things to the hilt by Jack Weston. Man, do I miss Jack Weston. He was just a great, uh, solid, funny, funny actor. There's some brilliant pieces of business that he brings to his part. This is like classic 70s acting, like weeping and having a tempered tantrum as she tries to marry Matthau. It's very strong on the comedy. Doris Roberts as her slovenly maid, James Coco uh, plays Matthau's uncle, and William Redfield is just beautifully underplayed as Henry's accountant that explains to him that he has no capital to a completely dry and deadpan Matthau. For years, there was only one print of a new leaf, this is true, and it was owned by May herself, and you would have to get her permission to borrow her one print to show it. Um, uh, um, oh, good, good start. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like those podcasts where they just sort of, they're in the middle of a conversation. Way to go, so, Mr. Morrow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on a podcast. Goodbye. <laughs>